My name is William Justice. This is about learning filmmaking. I was digging through DaVinci Resolve the other day and I found this. The duplicate effect. Today we're going to use the duplicate effect in DaVinci Resolve Fusion to create some quick and easy animations like this. I'm also going to show you an awesome trick to make any complex animation automatically animate itself back in reverse. Let's get started. The Fusion Duplicate effect is easy to use. The best way to get started is to set up a few option samples and play around with it and let's see what we can do. We can take some text and turn it into a pop text. The text goes in and it pops right out. We can take a few graphic shapes, send those in the duplicate and pop out with an interesting graphic animation. We can also do the trippy effect where I'm repeating all through the background. I have plans for lots of interesting filmmaking content to help boost your creativity and skills. Also, stick around through the end of this video and let me know what you think. I'd really like your feedback to let me know how I'm doing and maybe what I could do better. Okay, let's get started. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is create the uh, graphic animation. So we'll right click in the media pool, choose new fusion composition, and we'll, five seconds is fine, we'll hit create. Drag the fusion composition into the timeline and click fusion. Okay, the first step is we're going to create three shapes, uh, two circles and a rectangle, and then we're going to put them together in an animation. So with Fusion, to create a shape, you start with a background, and that creates a solid color. We're going to click two on the background to show it in the monitor. We'll get rid of the media pool there because we don't need it. And to turn this into a shape, you use some of these masking tools up here. So this is a circular shape. We'll drag that in here. And this is the mask input for the background. So as soon as we connect up the circle to the mask, it trims everything out and we only see the circle part. So the circle we want to use is gonna be a little bit smaller. Let's go over to the inspector and uncheck solid because we want it to just be an outline circle and boost of our border width. Make it a little bit smaller like that, okay. The next shape we wanna make is a rectangle. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna take the background Put that down then choose the rectangle mask up from up here and drag that into the background. We're going to put the background in the window by selecting it and entering two. Let's set the color to red and we're going to make the background, um, the rectangle a little bit smaller. We'll click on the rectangle. Let's make it a bit smaller here. And let's move it over just a touch right in there. We'll position this in a little bit. Okay, the last shape we want to make is another circle. So um, we can copy these two, select these two elements, hit Control C and Control V. That's going to paste them in. That's our second circle. We'll hit two there, right there on the background. So for this circle, we're going to make it a little bit smaller by up in the inspector dragging it. And let's make it just a bit thinner like that. Okay, so we have our three shapes. We have our, um, we have two circles and a rectangle. Now we're gonna hook all these together. So the first step is to, we're gonna create a merge node that goes right here. And we're gonna put the rectangle and the second circle into the merge node. Like that. Make this a little bit bigger as so we can see it. Then we're going to do a second merge node down here, and the background is going to go into the merge and then into the output. So let's, let's hit, hit select output and hit two. That's that circle. And then we're going to take these, the uh, rectangle and other circle and bring it into the merge. And there we got it. Now we just need to position them. So let's take the rectangle and we're going to move it over just a touch. Let's make it a bit smaller, like that. And let's click on the ellipse for the second circle. And we're going to move that over like that. That's the basic shape we're going to animate. OK, so we're going to animate the first circle. So we're going to click on the ellipse circle, go to frame one. And we're going to choose the uh, to animate, hit click the keyframe key for the level, as well as the width and height. I'm going to go over five frames by hitting the arrow key. We'll go ahead and do six frames. 
and we're going to keyframe these guys again and then go back to the first frame and make the circle really small and set the level to zero. So now when we play it, you'll see that the circle fades in. Okay, now we're going to animate the rectangle. So let's go to the frame right before the circle is at, is at its largest and select the rectangle node. We're going to keyframe the level property and the position property, which is the center X and Y. We're going to go over five, uh, six nodes or six frames. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to keyframe the level and position. Then let's hit this little back arrow to go back to the first keyframe. We're going to move the rectangle right into the middle of the circle and set the level to zero. And when we play it, we have the circle op uh, coming up with the rectangle sliding out. The last thing we're going to do is animate the second circle. So to do that, we're going to click the ellipse and we want to go to right the frame right before the uh, rectangle gets to its final position. So let's go like right there. We're going to animate the ellipse the same way we did with the first circle. So we're going to click on the level and the size, go out about five frames, keyframe the level and the size, go back to the first keyframe and we're going to set, we're going to make it a lot smaller grab these ellipse and shrink its size and set the level to zero. Now let's take a look at our basic animation. Okay, we have the circles opening up with the rectangle. Okay, now it's time to add in the duplicate animation. So we're gonna select the top merge node because we're gonna animate the second rectangle in the second circle. Hit shift spacebar, select duplicate and add. So it's added right in there. We'll just kind of move these around a little bit. Now what, what the duplicate node is going to do is it's going to allow us to modify the animation that we set up right up here. So the first thing we're going to do is come over to the inspector and let's do say 10 copies. And you can't see them because they're all on top of each other so we can change the angle of each of the copies and get them to spin around like that. Go back just a little bit. There you go. So let's see the animation that we got now. So we should have the circles opening up, rectangles coming out, and the circles. Now the next thing we wanted to do is go to the duplicate node and adjust the time offset. That means that each of these spokes is going to open up at a slightly different time. So we can move it back a little bit. Just like that. And you'll see that they're, they're going to open up at a different time. That's an offset for when the animation affects each of the copies. Let's take a look at what we have. All right, that looks good. Okay, the animation is set up. Now we're going to use a neat trick to reverse the animation and have it um, animate out and collapse in on itself. To do this, we're going to use the time speed node. So we'll click in the, in the node area, shift space, and type in time speed. Find the node and add it. So for the time speed node, we're going to connect that up with the merge at the bottom here into the input of the time speed. So what the time speed node does is it changes the speed or direction of the animation that's sent into its input. So we're going to click time speed. We're going to go to the inspector and set the speed to minus one. Now click on time speed, hit, hit two. So we see the time speed node in the inspector and you'll notice that it animates out just like that. And we'll put the merge and we'll put that in window one and enable both windows. And you can see in the beginning, we have it animate in, this is the merge node. And at the end, we have it animate out. This is the time speed node right here. So that what you can do is use a dissolve node in the middle of the animation to switch between the inputs on the dissolve. We'll show you how that works. Hit shift space, click dissolve. We're going to click, uh, drag the dissolve right on the line between the merge and the media out. And we'll go ahead and bring up media out in the output window. And we'll just do one. So right now we have the merge to the dissolve into the media out. And this is the basic animation. We'll take the time speed and drag that into the foreground of the dissolve and the, you'll see that it plays the output there. So right in the middle, 
right when the animation is completed, we're going to click on the dissolve, hit a keyframe, and we're going to switch between the foreground and background. So let's go back one frame and drag this so that we're showing the background as opposed to the foreground. So everything before this point is showing the background input. Everything after this point is showing the foreground input. So what we get is an animation that opens up and then collapses on itself, just like that. Okay, it took a little bit of time for Fusion to render the uh, animation, but let's check, take a look and see what we have. All right, there we go. We have a simple animation using uh, a few shapes and the duplicate node, along with the uh, time speed and dissolve to help it go backwards and animate away. This video is running a bit long, so I'm going to try to run through this one pretty quick. This is going to be the trippy animation. Actually, this one is pretty easy to do. First thing we're going to do is we got our clip loaded into the timeline. We're going to go into the color tab. We're going to go to the power windows and choose this option. We're going to draw a mask around where we want. This can be really rough. It does not matter a whole lot for this effect. Draw it all the way around and go to the tracker, move to the beginning and we're gonna track forward. All right, we got our track done for this mask. I'm gonna right click in the node area, say add alpha output and drag the alpha output to there. So we're gonna mask out all the background move these points in just a bit. Okay, we're going to go back to the power windows and for the area there we're going to expand the outside just a bit and soften it up. Okay, now we're going to go back to the edit tab. Okay, we're going to right click on this and we're going to make it a new compound clip. And let's go into Fusion. So we have our clip in Fusion. We're going to click on the media Hit shift space and add in the duplicate node. Add in there. We're going to, for the number of copies, let's set it to 20. And all we got, to, all we need to do is adjust the size. Just space it, space the size out a little bit and scroll down and set, check merge under. And we have our animation. The last thing we want to do is just animate the number of copies. So we're going to go to the first frame and we're going to keyframe copies save for about six space over about six frames hit copies go back to the first frame and set it to one copy and that way when we start out we're going to animate in with the number of copies like that we'll go to the very end of the animation hit the keyframe set we want set one copy go back about seven frames and set 20 copies. And that's about all there is. Go back to the edit to preview it. And this is what the animation looks like. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think of my tutorials, and if you have any questions, leave comments below. I'll be glad to get right back to you. I have lots more videos planned about DaVinci Resolve and filmmaking. Subscribe to my channel to follow my progress. Thanks.